mercy is God's system of advantage. Mercy is God's system of advantage that guarantees that we become full expressions of his expectations regardless our humanity. I'll take it again. That mercy is God's system of advantage that guarantees or ensures that we become full expressions of his expectations regardless our humanity. That means mercy is a system of advantage that God built to ensure that regardless how weak and frail we are, that we still become full expressions of his expectation. Hmm. That means regardless the limitation that comes by reason of my humanity, by reason of my exhaustion, by reason of my inadequacy, it is still possible that I will rise to, to, to my full prophetic potential. No wonder he has helped some of us to be where we are. Because we understand that we are products of his mercy. Every time you see a human being producing certain levels of extraordinary uncommon results, look beyond the skill, look beyond human connections. There is an amplifier because based on if we were to be assessed based on the true states of our limitation, we will not add up to what we are now. The mercy of God is a system of advantage. Someone shout hallelujah. This is what God designed to make sure that no matter how frail I am, no matter how frail you are, that there is a provision in his economy where regardless our frailty, we still are able to rise to become all that he's designed us to be. No wonder Peter was able to still be that apostle even though Peter ran away. Say mercy. No wonder Thomas, you know most people talk a lot about Thomas. They call him Doubting Thomas. Go and study Bible history and see the exploits that happened in the life of Thomas. Thomas was an exceptional, uncommon apostle. Yes, once upon a time, he was a doubter. But the latter end of his life was nothing short of a sign and a wonder. Is someone learning? Now, what does it take to receive God's mercy? Now that we know the nature of God, now that we have briefly looked at the nature of man and the reality of man's state that necessitates mercy, and now we have the basic concept of mercy, that on one hand, mercy has to do with pardoning defaulters and sinners. And then on the other hand, mercy has to do with a provision of support for those who are inadequate. I've studied my Bible and I found out that there is a condition God must find in a man. Otherwise, mercy cannot reach you. This is the high point of this teaching. And I want you to please listen. No matter how in need of mercy you are, mercy will never come to you until God finds this one condition. And that condition is found in Psalm 51 verse 17. Our Psalm again, 51 17. Thank you, Jesus. The sacrifices of God, is it in your Bible, are a broken spirit. It says, a broken and a contrite heart, O God, thou wilt not despise. The one condition God must find in man and with man to be able to reach down to you with his mercy is brokenness. Please write it down. Just because the mercy of God is supernatural, just because God is rich in mercy, does not mean that you will be a recipient of that mercy. He must find brokenness. What is brokenness? Brokenness 
is a realization. Please write it down. Brokenness is a realization. And brokenness is an admittance. A realization and an acknowledgement of your limitations and your inadequacies outside of the assistance and the help of God. Brokenness is a realization. Brokenness is also an acknowledgement of your limitations and your inadequacies outside of the help of God. You are broken to the degree to which you, number one, realize, and number two, acknowledge that if God does not help me by myself and by my strength, I am inadequate. Please look up, believers. We have preached the subject of mercy in church and many people have even come out to be candidates of mercy. Unfortunately, very few have received mercy. I know it by assessing the results in their lives. Do you know why? Because although most people want the fruits and the blessings of mercy, most people have compromised through pride. They have not come to a state of brokenness. I can tell you one thing with God. As loving and as wonderful as God is. The moment you come to God full of yourself. Believing he is only an addition to what you already have. Forget about mercy. It is not Bible mercy you will get. The Bible says the sacrifices of God are a broken and a contrite spirit. This was what I discovered in my study of the subject of mercy that broke me down. It broke me down in a way you cannot imagine. Psalm 34 and verse 18. Psalm 34 and verse 18. Psalm 34 and verse 18. Let's read together. It's projected. Ready? Please read. One to read. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken spirit. A broken heart and save it such as be of a did the Bible say he saves all no no there is a kind of man that God is looking for to be a recipient of his mercy tonight if you truly want to receive the mercy of God just crying and rolling will not bring mercy you must assume this posture in the spirit that when the mercy of God comes upon individuals and families and businesses and ministries, it is not just searching for sound, it is searching for this spiritual state. Read your Bible in the New Testament. Every time people cried unto God for mercy, for instance, blind Bartimaeus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and said, what do I do for you that I may receive my sight? And he prayed for him. Brokenness. Many people have not gotten to this point in their lives where they realize and acknowledge the fact that they are inadequate. Do you know why? Because you see, please look up. There is a state of the fallen man for some reason, man as a species is very, very stubborn. It takes a lot of defeat, recycled again and again to bring us to our knees. For instance, the nation of Israel, God himself called them a stiff-necked people. Do you know what that means? One who is not malleable. Proverbs chapter 3 from verse 5 to 7. It says, trust in the Lord with all your hearts. And then it says, lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him as what? That's the question. Acknowledge him as what? It is the reason why people of God, you would see God reach down to individuals in their lowly estate and begin to lift them with his hand and his jealousy and put them in positions that looks unfair. Do you know why? Because what he was looking for, he finally found in them. Whereas there can be other people who are even already privileged by default, but that self-pride. There are preachers today 
who have the they may have the backing of God but they have they, there is clearly no mercy in their lives when one plus one equals two in your life the mercy of God is not at work in your life because that is exactly what arithmetic says should be but when one plus one becomes an answer that only God writes the mercy of God has added to that result I've had the honor and the privilege of meeting very successful people successful in business successful in ministry successful career wise and as God grants me the privilege to sit with them and talk with them usually I want to ask tell me your story and there are certain points lines in those stories I'm looking for I connect the beginning of their lives and I want to know at what point mercy came in some of those who were recipients of that mercy did not even know when mercy came in they only know when brokenness came they will tell you I got to a point where I lost I failed and I cried all through the night aha uh -huh. from that time they will say I found a message from that time they will say I went for a meeting they did not know that from that time it was mercy that took them please listen very careful you can know when you are on a flight of mercy the result will be clear I wish I had the time I would have shown you from Luke 15, from verse 11, the story of the prodigal son. Theologically speaking, this is the greatest expression from uh, the standpoint of parables, the greatest expression of God's mercy. You know why? Because it's a very comprehensive parable. It shows a family from the beginning, the original plan. Then it shows the rebellion of a young man and it shows the consequences so it starts with a father that had two sons. Follow the story carefully. And it says that the father was a blessed and benevolent man. And provided the sons were under his care. They were comfortable. There was no mention of lack and limitation. The Bible says one day. I'm rushing because of time. One day the younger son met his father. And said father I am tired of dependence on you. You see the problem now? I, I have come to a point where I think I am smart and I am adult enough. I do not need your influence in my life. I am tired of giving you the glory behind the results that happen to me. It's, it's, it's a thing of embarrassment before my friends. Give me something, my portion of the inheritance and let me leave. And the father said, are you sure? He said, yes. He said, go. From the time he came out of the influence of his father lack began notice the gradual degradation that happened to that child the bible says he went and met his friends and he began to spend the money on riotous living then the bible says in verse 14 that in the course of time he spent everything is it in your bible and he began to be in want i like the word began meaning it was not his prior experience he began to be in want and he kept going down and down and down until he got to a point where he was feeding with pigs please follow this in your imagination once royalty having access to everything because of one foolish decision that was a communication of rebellion and pride father i do not want your influence in my life I discovered that I am I think I'm an adult enough you see in the realm of the spirit you measure spiritual maturity by your degree of dependence in the physical realm the more matured an adult you are we know you are an adult by your detaching from authorities around your life reverse is the case in the realm of the spirit that the more dependent you are the more matured you are because you have now realized that outside of the help and the mercy of God I cannot amount to much this young boy would be learning a very painful 
and powerful lesson. Here's what the Bible says. That he got to a point where he came to himself. Please look for that scripture for us. It is within the power of man to come to himself. The Bible never said the Holy Ghost spoke to him. The Bible never said a demon threatened him. Do you know, let me tell you this. Please look up. You may not believe me, but hear this. There is a dimension of pain that is a gift. Let me repeat it again. There is a dimension of pain that is a gift. Pain can be an advisor. Pain can be a counselor. So, there are times that when you see people going through certain levels of pain, you will want to help them. But you see, God will prohibit you. Because God will say, I've been working with this man for two years. I'm, I'm now at the moment where their strength has failed. Allow this pain to culture them into brokenness and repentance. Don't try to help people God is not helping. You may be destroying his program. Is someone learning very powerful lesson it had to take pain to bring this boy to his senses he came to himself the pride that came with the availability of resources did not allow him to have a, 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 a time of counseling to think what am I doing with my life but now pain had brought him to that point let's listen to his contemplations he came to himself and said, How many hired servants of my fathers have bread enough to spare and I perish with hunger? Here's what he said. Next verse. I will arise. Hallelujah. Something has happened to that gentleman. I'm praying for you. May this happen for you. Because there are many of you who have in reality taken God out of your life. You replaced him with over dependence on intellect over dependence on business ideas over dependence on human connections i'm not saying those things are wrong but my bible already says trust in the lord with all your heart that is the reason why you see some people when you are clapping for them they roll on the floor because they know that there is a part of this equation you cannot see i will arise and I will go to my father. And I will say unto him. Listen carefully. Hear the voice of brokenness. Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. Is someone following? And I am no more worthy to be called your son. This is not condemnation. This is revelation. His true state had now been revealed to him. He says, make me as one of your hired servants and he arose and he came to his father look at the miracle the bible says the gentleman said i will arise and i will go to my father he would have remained there and say it's just a blind thought he would have died there i assure you that hunger was already about to kill him he said i would die with hunger but the bible says indeed he arose notice this the moment he arose and started moving the father too left home and started coming he said draw nigh to me and i will i will not come and meet you in your rot and your situation there you cannot help yourself but acknowledge the fact that you are limited the moment you satisfy the condition of brokenness you are ready for mercy listen do you know why i'm teaching you this many of us here are leaders you must also find this in the people you show mercy to. Forgiveness is useless until there is brokenness and repentance. Anybody who is in need of mercy, the role that he has to play in receiving that mercy is to be broken first, to realize and to acknowledge. When you help people who are not broken, you endorse their pride. When you help people who are not broken, you accelerate their journey to perdition and destruction. Are we together? It is the reason why when we make altar calls, sometimes we ask people to come out. We, it's not to embarrass them. Leaving your seat and defying the shame, leaving your colleagues and your loved ones and coming to stand there is a token, is an expression of your brokenness. 
Are we together? Unfortunately, these days, there are people who come and stand here and still are not saved. When you look at them, you don't see brokenness. They are even still standing and recording the preacher. All they want is just a, a photo of his, of his picture. While a powerful prayer of salvation is going on. Lord Jesus and the person is just recording. But the only thing he says in that prayer is amen. You are not saved, sir. No, sir. Except scripture will be broken. The Bible says if you will confess with your heart. Are we Bible students? The Lord Jesus. And believe, confess with your mouth. And believe in your heart that he was raised from the dead. He says then you are saved. Brokenness. Now let's see what happened. The Bible says he arose and he came to his father. But when he was a great way off, his father saw him and had. You see our formula again. What was the first thing the father had? I told you mercy is the fruit of compassion. You cannot have and show mercy until it, there is first compassion. Pity. This young man is limited. He is frail. And the Bible says, he ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. 21, very interesting verse. And the son truly said what he said he would say. If the son did not say this, if verse 21 was not in that scripture, we will know he's a hypocrite. He said he was going to say it. And when he met his father, he truly said it. Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight i am no more worthy to be called your son next verse but the father said to his servants look at the father this describes the character of god the moment the father found brokenness there was no discussion of the issue again it was over this is the i, I want to show you how mercy works now there is no point discussing the issue what i am looking for i have found Ah, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Do you know why I'm saying this? Because you see, men will not forget your past. Men will not forget your yesterday. Even when you have become Paul, they will keep reminding you of when you were Saul. Jesus died, I agree, but how long did he die? He only died for three days. When he was now resurrected, they were still talking about the dead Jesus. Like many people will still be talking about your 10 years ago. They will say, Rahab, the great grandmother of Jesus, is it the Rahab I used to know? But the prodigal son's father showed us the character of God. The moment he finds brokenness, the end of discussion to that limitation. No more discussion. He would have said, what a stupid boy you are. So this is what you have become. You could not even leave anything. At least the man with one talent even brought back the talent. What? You didn't bring back anything. And then they will beg him and beg him and later he say, alright, mm -mm, that's not God. Remember, the Lord is gracious and compassionate. That's why I started by showing you the nature of God. Listen, if you do not understand the nature of god you cannot express that character of god to those who are under you because you see the end of this discussion i'll leave that for tomorrow the moment you receive mercy you must one day be in the position of this father too every one of us in this story will be both the father and the son are, are you getting my discussion some of you for now you are like the son you need to come back. But for some of you, as leaders, you are that father. There are people who are long overdue for mercy. They have been broken. That case has to be over. Hmm. No shadow you will light up. Mountain you will climb up. Coming after me. No wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. Listen, the Bible tells us there were two thieves on the cross. Is that in your Bible? Jesus was in the middle of two thieves. I wish I had time. I would have taught you that the cross is where both good and bad people meet. <laughs> you will think because you are Jesus, the cross will not be there. 
the cross and the prison are two mysterious places because no matter who you are you must pass through the prison or the cross it is not you don't have a choice to exempt it you only have a choice to choose whether it's the cross or the prison these are two mysterious places in life and destiny they forerun every throne the prison foreruns the throne and the cross foreruns the throne joseph you must pass through the prison to sit as prime minister jesus not even you will be spared of the cross can i tell you this this is not my message but i just thought to digress for one minute because some of you are right now you are in states where you do not even know lord how come the righteous and the unrighteous are in the same condition remember the prison and remember the cross jesus was hanging on that cross and there were two thieves by his side and one was open and he began to shout at jesus in his pride even while on the cross these were thieves so they both stole and the other one was shouting at jesus you can't even save us and then the other one demonstrated brokenness he said mr man this is an innocent man in between us paraphrasing we are victims of our wrongs and jesus looked at him even on the cross he did not ignore brokenness he says today you will be with me it is a both of you today because there is brokenness you will be with me in paradise hallelujah When I learned the mercy of God perpetually, this is not self-condemnation, but let me tell you the truth. Every time I go to God in prayer, I go to him and I say, Father, there are so many people who depend on this grace and you know, if I am left to myself, I cannot even help myself, talk less helping other people. I ask that by your mercy and by your grace you will help this man who is so limited and inadequate that is the kind of prayer God wants to hear and he will come to you and pick you on the wings of eagles and your life will command results and dimensions of possibilities that will dumbfound you and everybody around you but when they add you up you don't equal that answer because the mercy of god is the mystery behind your results please listen to me this is a very powerful message the mercy of god I have seen the mercy of God in my life. I have seen the mercy of God in ministry. When people come and ask me what is the secret, I can only tell them the best that I know. But then leave them with the fact that everything I told you is not the whole answer. There is a part of this answer I don't have the power to give. I will have to direct you like an usher to the one who can show men mercy. I have seen families where the man and the woman are well-cultured, disciplined parents and all four children became hooligans. All four of them. Have you seen that happen? Respectfully speaking. Lawless children. You can't say the children were not trained. They fasted with the parents. They did night vigils. And the children still became what they became. And yet I have seen children where the child can leave home for two weeks and return back the third week the mother can see the child five times in a year and the child is in that city and one day the child will be moving somewhere and enter into one conference and the power of god will hit that child the next time the child returns he's a well-cultured stable young man on fire and the mother and the parents have no hand in the transformation of that child someone shout mercy I have seen diligent people trusting God to raise money and build and doing their best and the moment they are building they have a problem with maybe some government and they can come and demolish that building and I've seen people who in their innocence someone would just say I like you and I want to help you look let me tell you this you never downplay the power of God's mercy 
Hallelujah. Even in my own life, sincerely and respectfully speaking, I will tell you, there are times, maybe because of my schedules, and sometimes I'm not able to see people and minister to them as I would want to. And then in the midst of all that crowd, you see people who fly in all over the world and they are standing, doing their best. And I can turn somewhere and you can see a little boy and the mother somewhere. Someone just held them and said, I can help you see apostle. And they are standing there and I'm saying, my God, look at the mercy of God. The ability to pardon an offender and the ability to add up for the inadequacies of the other. Everyone seated here and you who uh, is following from television or across the globe, we are all in need of God's mercy. There are people during this pandemic and all through, it was their wealthiest moment. They were sitting quietly and fortune just came and met them like an arm robber and changed their lives completely. There are others who for decades they had a track record of diligence and in one year they were brought down to nothing. Someone again shout mercy. Your mind is fighting what you are saying and say, remember your skill is there. Shout mercy again. Yes. Let your mind and your spirit know that beyond skill and beyond human connection, ah, except the Lord builds a house. Is it not in your Bible that they labor in vain that build it, except the Lord watches over the city? Hi, God bless you, precious saints. You're welcome to Art Foreign Stream YouTube channel. And we trust that through the mouth of God's servant, Apostle Joshua Selman, revival comes to your way. Like the scripture said, and they that believe, he that believe, for out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. We do ensure that this stream that is flowing from the Lord reaches to the nations, reaches to your life, and touches everything that pertains to your life. On this channel, we are hopeful that the Lord stirs your spirit up, increases your faith, energizes your spirit man to walk in his perfect reality, in his counsel and will for your life, in business, in career, and in all that you set your hands to do. We trust the Lord that you become connected, you stay connected and stay in tune with what he is doing for your life, for your family, in this season and in this year. And if you are a new viewer on this channel, we like you to subscribe and also hit the notification bell so as to stay in tune with every bit of our uploads. God bless you.